Okay, in this video, I want to talk about Newton's laws, Newton's three laws, and how they relate to vector statics. Newton had three laws, and I'm on the left here, so I made a little chart here. So on the left, um, I'll state Newton's law, one of the three laws, and then on the right, I'll explain how it relates to vector static. We'll just go one by one, each law, and kind of define how it relates to vector static. So the very first law, so Newton's very first law, is that a body at rest will stay at rest and a body in motion will remain in motion unless it's acted upon by some external force or forces. So in the last video, we actually defined what vector statics is. And when we were talking about the definition of statics, uh, we came up with this uh, term static equilibrium. And static equilibrium really meant that the acceleration of that object when it's subject to forces, um, the acceleration is equal to zero. So if a body was at rest, its acceleration would be at rest. Or if it was moving at a constant velocity, its acceleration would still be zero. So Newton's first law, when Newton says a body at rest will remain at rest and a body in motion will remain in motion, what that really means and how it translates to vector statics is that that object will not experience an acceleration unless there's some sort of an external force that comes in and, and disrupts the motion of that uh, object or the original state of that object. In other words, if you had some sort of a particle and the resultant force on that particle was zero, then the original state of that object will be maintained. So if an object was sitting at rest and there were no external forces, then the object will continue staying in rest. If it was moving at a constant velocity and the resultant forces on it were still zero, then again, the acceleration is going to be zero. And so the object will continue moving at that constant velocity unless it's acted upon by external forces. So let's say I had a particle right here and to this particle I applied two forces. Uh, one was three newtons to the right and the second force was three newtons to the left. Now, intuitively, you can see that if I have three newtons here acting to the right and three acting to the left, then the resultant of these external forces, those two forces, are going to be zero. So what that means is that this particle or this object that we're studying right now, if that object was originally at rest, it was not moving, then if you applied both of these forces at the same time, the resultant's gonna be zero, so this object's going to continue staying at rest. However, if this object was initially in motion or originally in motion, it was moving at a constant velocity, and then you apply three newtons to the right and three newtons to the left, well, the resultant of both of those forces are zero, and if that's true, then the acceleration is zero, and so, uh, Newton's first law uh, really states that, well, if this object was at rest and the resultant forces are zero, the object will remain at rest. If it was moving at a constant speed, a constant velocity, and then you applied these external forces and the resultant of those forces were zero, then the object will continue to remain in motion. Awesome. So let's move on to Newton's second law. Okay, so Newton's second law simply states that the force on an object or forces uh, that equals the object's mass times its acceleration, and you might know it as F equals ma, right? Newton's One of Newton's most famous equations. Now remember, in statics, when an object is in static equilibrium, it means that its acceleration is zero. Its acceleration here is zero. And if acceleration is zero, then the forces acting on that object must equal zero for that object to remain in static equilibrium. So what if the resultant of those external forces do not equal zero? Then that simply means that the particle will have an acceleration. And that acceleration is going to be proportional to the resultant force's magnitude and its direction of the resultant force. Okay, so a few things here. One, if the resultant force is not zero, then that particle will have an acceleration proportional to the resultant force's magnitude and it's going to be in the direction of the resultant force. So the acceleration vector is going to be in the direction of the resultant force. So let's say you had a particle here, and after doing some calculations, you figured out that the resultant force acts at one newton to the right of that particle. So if this one newton is the resultant force on that particle, 
then that tells us that F does not equal zero, right? F equals one Newton. And if that's the case, if the resultant force does not equal zero, then the particle will have an acceleration that's proportional to that resultant force's magnitude. So what does that part mean? Well, if we look back here, F equals MA, it simply means that the acceleration here is not going to be zero, but it's going to be proportional to the resultant force. And it's going to be proportional by a factor of m, which is the particle's mass or the object's mass. Okay, so then what about the second part? Uh, and in the direction of the resultant force. So again, if the resultant force is not zero, in this case, it's one Newton acting to the right, this second part simply means that the acceleration vector, the acceleration vector is going to be in the same direction as the force vector. So if the force vector is acting to the right, then the acceleration vector is also going to be acting to the right. And so again, you see why direction is so important in vector statics. And it's also why we take this general equation F equals MA and we express it in terms of vectors. So we don't just simply say that force is equal to mass times acceleration. We say that the resultant forces or the forces in vector form is equal to mass times acceleration, which where acceleration is a vector and force is a vector. So the only scalar quantity here is mass. Okay, so let's move on to Newton's last law, Newton's third law. And Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And the most important part here is that it's equal and it's opposite. So this implies that the magnitude of the action is going to be equal to the reaction and the direction of that reaction is going to be opposite of what the action was. So in the world of statics, this means that the action forces between two bodies that are in contact have forces that have the same magnitude, the same line of action, and they are in opposite directions. So a very classic example of this law is Newton's law of gravitation. And you might know Newton's law of gravitation is force is equal to G, which is the constant of gravitation, times mass one times mass two over the distance uh, between those two mass bodies. So this is Newton's law of gravitation. And in kind of a pictorial sense, this means that if you have two mass bodies here and here, and let's say one of them is of mass capital M, one is lowercase m, and the distance between them is d, then the force that they're going to exert on one another, so the force here and the force here, is going to be equal to capital G times m times m over d squared. And so the two forces are going to be like this. They're going to be attracting one another. So this is going to be force and this is going to be negative force. And these two forces, they're going to have the same magnitude, right? The same magnitude pulling against one another. And they're going to have the same line of action, which simply means that if we drew a line here, both of those force vectors are acting along that line. However, they are going to have opposite directions. So this force is, you know, going to the right, and this force has the same magnitude and is along the same line of action, but it's moving to the left, but it's pointing to the left. So how does this relate to statics, right? Because this is kind of a, a more uh, general example of Newton's third law. How does that uh, relate to statics? Well, a very, very simple example is that if you had a chair, so I'm gonna draw a very poorly drawn chair here, right? And this chair is, you know, resting on the ground and you come and you sit in that chair you are going to be in static equilibrium given that you know somebody doesn't move the chair or you break the chair but in other words you are going to be applying a force onto the chair and that force is going to be equal to your weight and weight is you know mass times gravity now because this physical system this entire system right here is in static equilibrium we know that the chair is going to exert an equal and opposite force onto you. Now, if it didn't, you would just fall straight through the chair or the chair would break. And so again, this is a very, very, very simple example of how Newton's third law uh, relates to vector statics.